Hi, my name is Caitlin. I'm one out of seven family members, five who all struggle with addiction. In 2015, I lost my sister Melissa to a heroin overdose. Um, I watched my brothers, my mom, my dad all struggle with addiction my entire life. Uh, we need to break the cycle and end the stigma, I believe, with the children with kids Layla's age. Hi, my name is Layla. In 2015, my aunt passed away to a heroin overdose. She was like a second mother to me. She was kind and sweet, and she didn't deserve to die. My film Life with Layla shows people who are struggling or family members who are watching people struggling to know that there's always hope and there is a chance that they could get better. This is the sweet spot of the evening. Everybody, I'm glad you're here. Are you glad you're here? During the late 70s and 80s, I played bands, in a lot of bands, and went off the rails. My hero is Keith Moon and Ginger Baker, if any of you remember those guys. So I guess, yeah, but you know, I thought I had to be high too to play good. And I went down that road and, um, after a crash and burn, I connected with a pastor. He found out I played drums and he said, how'd you like to be our drummer in Israel? And I said, well, it was a Christian rock band. I said, whoa, you know? So I said, maybe that will help me put my roots down in the ground. I won't get blown over so easy. And I took him up on it. And I stayed in that seat for 10 years. And it just, it was the camaraderie. It's being, we're stronger together, right everybody? And it was being together with people that were like-minded. And it just kept going ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. And I didn't think, next thing I knew, I wanted to, I wanted to do what he did, you know? And I said, I thought my past would disqualify me. But what I found out was my past was preparing me to love more and judge less. See what I mean? There are people I can reach now that I, someone else just can't. And I found that niche and I just focused and kept going. I kept putting one foot in front of the other. All those baby steps add up. There was many years of studying, my Lord. And now I'm a pastor of my own church in Butler, Church of the Nazarene. And I meet everybody where they're at, man. And God told me. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to make him love you any more than he already does. And there's nothing you can do to make him love you any less than he already does. And that took all the pressure off. You know, when you put your hands up, you kind of surrender, but it also means victory too, doesn't it? Yeah. And I found that spot, and I hope you do too. So let's bow our hearts for a minute, let me pray. Lord, I pray for the tongue of the learned to speak a word in season to those who are weary. And let your beauty fall upon us and establish the work of all our hands. And you promised us more and better life than we ever dreamed of when we put our hope in you. And you wired us for relationships, meaning we have to be together. And we're so much stronger when we are together. So Father, for the rest of the evening, there are people that are hurting, there are people that met you this evening. And all the anxiety and all the pressure and all our burdens you told us to cast upon you, we were never meant to carry it. So we're gonna leave it with you. I guess our problem is we take it back 10 minutes later, right? But. I'm gonna keep coming to you moment by moment. I'm held from above moment by moment. We're all kept in his love. 
So we surrender the rest of the evening to you, Lord. Just please open up our hearts. And though someone needing help right now, please come and talk to one of us and get plugged in. Amen. Thank you, everybody. The first time I ever stood on stage and spoke was when I was 12 years old. And it was six months after my oldest brother and my hero died of a heroin overdose. And it was at Randolph Middle School in Morris County in this town where I told people not to do drugs because it destroys lives. I had my own struggles with addiction and depression and so many other things and received victory through them one day at a time. I pastor a church here in Victory Gardens, New Jersey called the Garden Chapel. And through that and Municipal Alliance and all the other organizations and Vicky's organization, get a lot of phone calls from people that are struggling, that need help. It takes me driving sometimes an hour to two hour away to a detox or a rehab with someone that I just met. Other times it's just me talking on the phone hoping that they're willing to uh, make that change. And then other times it's comforting, comforting friends and family who lost, just like I have lost so many. I think about this, I've been fighting the heroin epidemic for over 21 years. But things have changed even more recently. I no longer feel like I'm fighting alone. And isn't that the answer to let everyone else know that they're not fighting alone? And so, if we can, I just ask everyone to make a difference tonight just by standing up. Right now, just stand up. I've been so blessed, my wife and my daughter never thought anything that I do was crazy or weird, but have joined me in every way to support and to stand. And that's what I ask each and every one of you to do, just as each and every one here tonight has done, is taking a stand to make a difference. And I guarantee you, if you stand with me and you stand with us, we will make a change and we will make a difference. And that's my heart and that's my prayer. Thank you.
to recovery, they told me to buy a black dress. And I have used it more times than I could have ever imagined, and more times than I ever would have wanted to. I lose friends monthly, or at least acquaintances. And until this is over, I don't expect it to stop. We need to continue this fight until we win. Or we're going to keep losing the people that we love. He was a beautiful soul. He was a poet, and a recording artist, and a producer. And he had the most amazing heart, Malik. And he would come to my house with flowers and just because he was grateful to be taking lessons. I can't believe he's gone. That was years ago. And uh, then just recently, my sister-in-law's sister Suddenly, we thought she was doing well. So, Karen, you are in our prayers. This, this disease does not discriminate. Stop. 